Cuban Revolution was a series of fierce battles between the people of Cuba and the regime of one Fulgencio Batista. This revolution lasted a total of almost six years and consumed the lives of thousands of Cubans. The reasons for longevity in the Cuban Revolution are armaments and training, exile of revolutionaries, little cohesion between rebel groups, radical acts of both sides, and foreign support of Batista. Armaments and training. The rebels were receiving very little weapons from other nations, and most of the weapons they already had were of poor quality. The weapons they did receive they had to pay for, and they were receiving weapons from many different nations, leaving no consistency in the performance of weaponry. This caused confusion in weapon use and many instances of weapons misuse. For example, in the midst of a battle between revolutionaries and government troops, two rebels were firing a bazooka at a small building with no success in hitting their target. The building was not hit until Che Guevara, one of the leaders of the 26th of July movement, and one of the better trained fighters, took the bazooka from the men and fired it at the building, hitting his target in only one shot. Along with this, the rebel forces had very little training in warfare beyond guerrilla tactics, leaving them an easy target for open field warfare, and decreasing the amount of success after a battle. Attacking large targets without formal military training resulted in many deaths, slowing progress down as they would have to recruit soldiers to replace the ones that had fallen. Batista's troops had received formal military training and were receiving weapons and supplies from the United States. The U.S. soon had placed an embargo on the Cuban government, but they had already supplied the government with weapons and training techniques to be used against the rebels. The government troops also had a lot more success, access to armored vehicles and tanks, allowing them to cause a great deal of damage without losing massive amounts of troops. The rebels had limited access to such vehicles, but they used what they had. To derail a supply train headed for government troops, Che Guevara had used a bulldozer to destroy the tracks, and later tried to convert the bulldozer into a tank with little success. The support of the tanks caused many more casualties on the revolutionary side, and slowed battlefield progress of the revolutionaries. Being trained in formal military tactics, the government troops had a better chance at winning in open battle. Although the army performed poorly in most battles, they still inflicted enough damage on the rebels to slow progress heavily. Without the ability to go on the offensive quickly after a battle, rebel groups were forced to regroup and rebuild what they had left, giving the government troops time to also regroup and collect supplies for the next battle. This had been a very large reason for the longevity, as each side took a long time to regroup, and both sides had the opportunity to regroup, causing battles to be longer and for each side to last a longer time in battle. Exile of Revolutionaries after the 1953 attack on the Moncada barracks, many captured rebels were executed. Those who weren't were put on trial and sent to prison. From these trials arose Fidel Castro's famous speech, History Will Absolve Me, with which he made himself and other rebels seem like the good guys in the fight for power, and gained a lot of political notice from the speech. This speech led to the eventual release of political prisoners in 1955. Once released, the prisoners were exiled to Mexico, where Fidel met the leader of the Republican forces of the Spanish Civil War, and where he met Che Guevara. These two men helped Fidel train his many exiles and prepare them for the battle that was to come. While the exile was only a little over a year long, the imprisonment alone was the two years. Once the rebels had returned, they were betrayed by their guide and led into an ambush of Batista's forces. Rebels suffered heavy losses and were forced to retreat to the Sierra Maestra Mountains, further delaying further delaying the revolution from taking off with vigor. This means that the rebels were out of action for well over three years, creating a large window for Batista to prepare his force for another possible uprising, and creating an obvious lapse of time in the revolution. This imprisonment and exile resulted in the revolution lasting three more years than necessary, obviously playing a large role in the longevity of the revolution. Little cohesion between rebel groups. While Fidel and Che led one of the larger rebel groups in Cuba, there were still many more all across the nation. These rebel groups performed many attacks on government locations over the course of the revolution. While they all inflicted continuous damage on the Batista regime, they had not coordinated their attacks very effectively. Most attacks were random events that occurred with no correspondence between rebel groups. Some of these groups were the 26th of July movement, the Revolutionary Di uh, Directorate, and Radio Rebelde. Unlike the 26th of July movement or the Revolutionary Directorate, Radio Rebelde was one of the rebel groups that saw no fighting, but instead spent time 
winning over the hearts and minds of other Cubans to strengthen the rebellion, not only militarily, but politically and socially. The attacks that groups such as these performed included the 1957 attack on the Presidential Palace in Havana, the attack on the Moncada Barracks, and the many attacks located around the Sierra Maestro mountain range. A lot of the smaller attacks had failed, such as the attack on the Presidential Palace. This attack was performed by the Revolutionary Directorate. The leader of the group died in a shootout, and two survivors of the attack, Orlando Cubella and Fior Chomond, created the 13th of March movement. This movement was based off the 26th of July movement, and took a foothold in the mountain range of S. Cambrai. Due to the lack of cohesion and communication between these groups, Batista's forces were unable to defend Batista and his regime from multiple attacks without crumbling. Without the groups working together, the revolution was delayed severely, and no large military force was truly amassed by the rebels until 1958. This can be equated to the Axis powers of World War II, as Germany and Japan did not coordinate any military actions, which eventually led to the downfall of the alliance. Unlike the Axis powers, though, the rebellion eventually succeeded. Radical Acts of Both Sides While Batista was trying to defend against the rebels, his forces would capture rebels and torture them in an effort to extract useful information from them. This torture was gruesome and often resulted in death. These deaths were one of the cornerstones of what Fidel and Che had built their rebellions on, asserting that Batista was an evil and ruthless dictator, and that he needed to be removed from power for the safety of the people. Although they were against the torture publicly, privately they allowed torture of captured government troops for the same purpose, information extraction. These, meso these methods also resulted in death of the victim, and many of the victims were laid out as a warning to others who might support the opposing side. To the general public, this was seen as very radical, and a lot of simple-minded people of the country wanted no part of either side's tactics. This left a portion, portion of the country without a declared side, leaving them neutral. While they did support either the government or independence, they would not lend any more support than that of moral support as they saw both sides as doing the wrong things to gain what they wanted. This can be related to Molly Maguire's labor union that arose in, in around the turn of the 20th century. The middle class saw their views as very unethical and would not lend support to them, despite their own views. They thought their tactics were the wrong way of achieving their goals. While this is a more one-sided example, it still relates quite well, as in both cases, parties were using radical action to instill fear which inversely caused less support. Foreign Support of Batista The United States has supported Batista for the better half of the revolution. While they had not lent direct military support, they provided military supplies and aid to the Cuban government, and did not support the rebels. This gave the Cuban government a better footing to launch their attacks from, as they had the support of one of the strongest nations in the world at that point. This also gave the Cuban government and military more confidence, possibly raising troop morale. The raise in troop morale would have raised fighting ability and success rate, causing a prolonged affair with the many rebel groups. Once the United States had placed the embargo on Cuba, the Cuban government could have become bitter, and without the power to strike out against the United States, they struck out more violently against the rebels, increasing the violence and fierceness of battle. This fierceness could also place a bit of recklessness into the government troops, causing more losses on both sides, reiterating the point stated earlier that this would elongate regrouping periods. The longevity of the Cuban Revolution can be broken down into five parts. Foreign support of Batista, radical acts, armaments and training, lack of cohesion in the rebel groups, and the exile of early revolutionaries. The largest factor out of all of these is the exile of early rebels, as it added an unnecessary three years to the revolution, while providing the rebels with two of their best leaders. The next largest factor would be the lack of cohesion in the rebel groups, as they could not deal a large blow to Batista without working together. Without working together, they did nothing more for a long time than disperse the government army across Cuba, but still weakened the government army slowly. All of these factors played a large role in the longevity of the revolution, and all are what created the bloody and fierce mess known as the Cuban Revolution.